Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing processes and uh, today uh, we will be uh, starting a new topic that is uh, related with the joining of the metals and uh, we will take up first the fundamentals of the metal joining. But before going into uh, the fundamentals of the joining uh, metal joining. Uh, techniques, I uh, will uh, talk the remaining portion, little bit remaining portion of the last lecture which was left one was uh, related with the grinding and uh, the three aspects which were related with the, uh, the wheel wear or the uh, cutting efficiency of the grinding. So, what we know that when the grinding wheel like this is uh, used for uh, grinding of the soft metals. So, during the grinding of the soft metals whatever chips come out of the after grinding they find spaces, spaces the chips fill in the spaces between the abrasive grains. So, this is what is termed as clogging of the uh, spaces uh, between the abrasive grains and when it happens. Uh, the smoothening, smoothening of the grinding wheel surface takes place, grinding wheel surface takes place and which in turn reduces the cutability of the grinding uh, wheel. So, this process of uh, clogging, uh, so this process in which clogging of the soft metal into the fine spaces between the abrasive grains take place is called loading of the grinding wheel and uh, uh, because of this uh, when the flattening and smoothening of the grinding wheel uh, occurs. So, that is termed as glazing, glazing in an effect wherein the smoothening and flattening of the, uh, of the grinding wheel surface takes place by filling in the spaces between the abrasive grains due to the clogging of the metal uh, especially of the soft workpiece material. So, this glazing uh, in turn reduces the cutability of the of the grinding wheel. So, it is important that cutting efficiency of the grinding wheel or grinding efficiency is maintained properly. It is uh, required that all this clogged metal is removed from the surface of the wheel and for that purpose uh, what we use? We use the operation dressing. In dressing uh, dressing is basically where in either another grinding wheel rotating at much higher speed or a star shape diamond tool. Diamond tool is used so that uh, this star shape diamond tool is pressed against the grinding wheel. So, all these the clogged metal, the clogged metal and uh, the glazed surface both glazed surface as well as clogged metal they are removed and the surface is surface of the wheel is roughened. So, that uh, the cutability of the grinding uh, wheel can be improved. So, this, uh, this dressing means uh, making the surface of the wheel rough with the help of either high speed running high speed root rotating grinding wheel or a diamond shaped cutting tool which is pressed against the surface of the wheel. So, that uh, the surface the clogged metal is removed and the fresh grains uh, fresh cutting grains are uh, exposed to the surface surface is roughened. So, that the cutability of the grinding wheel or ability to remove the material or ground the material can be improved. So, what we have seen basically loading then glazing and then uh, dressing. All these three uh, are uh, re related with each other. We know that when there is a loss of the material, uh, there uh, whenever there is a uh, grinding wheel which is in use, so there is a loss of material, loss of material from the grinding wheel. So, if the loss of material is uniform all along the periphery, then probably the shape of the wheel will remain circular 
and it will remain balanced. But in the case when the removal of the material is not uniform all along the periphery, it is more at one location than other. In that case, uh, there will be the loss of balance in the wheel. So, first the shape of the wheel will not remain circular, it may remain, uh, it may go out of the shape. So, out of the shape means the shape loss of the wheel will be taking place and because of the shape loss or non-uniform material loss from the circumference of the grinding wheel, it will be losing its balance. So, the balancing of the wheel due to non-uniform wear as, as well as loss of shape, both needs to be corrected uh, and so for this purpose basically a turning kind of process turning kind of process is used where work piece is rotated like this and another grinding wheel uh, is brought firmly in uh, is pressed firmly against the grinding wheel which is to be processed. So, this is this is the worn out the grinding wheel and this is the another correcting grinding wheel which will be uh, it is pressed against the wheel which is to be uh, which has been worn out so that uh, so that it can be used for correcting the shape. So, th this is just like a turning kind of the process where the, uh, the correcting grinding wheel will be used as a tool and uh, the worn out grinding wheel will be used as a work piece. So, uh, uh, this uh, actually in turn will be leading to the perfect circular shape of the wheel and this process is called truing. Truing is a process where the shape of the wheel is brought back to the original shape or the circular shape when its shape goes out of the uh, circular shape due to the non-uniform wear. Similarly, the balancing of the wheel is important because if uh, due to the non-uniform wear of the wheel, if uh, the material loss is unequal, then it will be heavier in one side than other side and this will lead to the uh, a lot of imbalance in the grinding wheel which is rotated say this is the lighter side of the wheel and this is the heavier side. So, during the rotation at much higher speed maybe like say 3000 to 4000 rpm under these conditions even little bit imbalance in the grinding will be, le will be leading to the high centrifugal forces. So, high centrifugal forces will be generating uh, unstabilizing forces that will be leading to the vibrations and even it may lead to the uh, instability of the grinding wheel machine which is uh, being used. So, that will be leading to the unnecessary noise, a reduced surface finish which can be achieved heavy vibrations due to the imbalance. So, uh, for this purpose normally uh, wherever there is a uh, so, so suitable weights are uh, attached to the wheel uh, by fill by drilling the holes and filling the heavy metal like lead so that uh, the wheel can be balanced further in order to uh, avoid the adverse effects related to the imbalancing of the wheel. So, uh, apart from the dressing, the truing is another which is basically for correcting the shape and balancing is about. Uh, the balancing of the wheel in order to deal with the problems related to the imbalance of the wheel. So, these are the four uh, or five terms uh, related to the grinding wheels which uh, uh, will be uh, uh, which will be experienced by the grinding wheel during the uh, service after some time. So, loading, glazing, dressing, truing and balancing these are the four common things which are experienced and which are applied in order to get the things back into the shape properly like uh, mm, truing, balancing and uh, uh, dressing of the grinding wheel. Now, we will come to the next topic that is about the joining of the metals, joining of the metals. So, joining of the metals like the two or more parts are brought together are brought together for required for achieving the required size and 
shape. Basically, the simple shape components are brought together so that the desired final size, which may be complex one, also can be achieved. Uh, for this purpose, basically, the two approaches are used. One is called assembly, uh, another is called joining. In assembly, basically, the mechanical methods are used uh, like uh, riveting and uh, the nuts and bolts, uh, even press fitting is also one of them. Uh, but here, most of the time, most of the methods allow easy disassembling of the parts if required. On the other hand, joining basically involves the processes like uh, mostly processes like welding, shouldering, brazing and adhesive, adhesive joining. So, most of these joints are uh, basically uh, the permanent in nature, although if they are, uh, if the suppression is needed, needed, then joints need to be broken. Another thing uh, is that uh, here uh, the suitable selection or proper selection of the, the metal or the filler metal for the welding purpose can lead to the even joint is stronger than the joint is stronger than the base or parent metals. So, for example, uh, mostly like in processes in brazing and shouldering, the weak material is used at the interface. So, these joints are weaker as compared to the base metal usually, but uh, if we consider the another case where fusion welding is uh, applied. so. So, in that case basically the filler metal, uh, if the thick plate is to be welded, then the application of the filler metal can lead to the joint which may be stronger than the base metal. So, the selection of the filler metal, selection of the filler metal basically to a great extent determines the strength of the joint which will be realized through such kind of the weld joint. So, not necessarily it will be uh, it will be uh, weaker in case of the joining so basically we'll be focus uh, we'll be focusing on the joining techniques used for metal joining so um, uh, as i have mentioned that this uh, the joint is permanent in nature which is produced uh, mostly in joining processes like welding brazing shouldering and adhesive joints uh, adhesive bonding uh, and uh, suitable selection of the filler metal can also lead to the having uh, to have the joint which may be even stronger than the base metal and parent metal. But uh, if we talk of the limitations related with the process, joining processes like uh, the welding processes, then these requires lot of skill. The skill of the worker is important in determining the success of the joint. Uh, another one, if the joint is need to be if the joint need to be disassembled, then it is a problem because the joint is permanent in nature and there is always danger uh, because of use of high energy or heat or the power. So, there is a possibility for harm to the operator as well as uh, this is also uh, sensitive for the, uh, the defects, the joints which are made are sensitive for the defects and most of these can be made in the factory environment only. If we see the applications of the joining process, mostly these are used in like say the construction industry for joining various uh, parts and components, then uh, like uh, the, uh, bridges, uh, then uh, pressure vessels like penny stocks, pipelines. Uh, automobiles, most of the automobile systems will be having lot of uh, the weld joints, mostly these are the spot welds and uh, then in energy sectors like uh, nuclear uh, reactors uh, will uh, be having the uh, joints and uh, uh, then it will also uh, include uh, the pressure vessels and fabrication of the machinery uh, like uh, so many machines whatever we see all around us needs uh, joining of uh, the different kind. 
uh, according to the AWS if the joining processes are classified then in simplified form what uh, the classification is in two broad categories one is the fusion welding and another is solid state welding. In the fusion welding we have like arc welding, gas welding process uh, like uh, laser beam and uh, electron beam, uh, plasma arc welding. So, most uh, most of the uh, even resistance welding also has been kept in this case uh, under the fusion uh, welding category. Then in the solid state, uh, solid state joining there uh, the joints are made in the solid state itself. So, under this category we have friction welding, uh, ultrasonic welding, uh, explosive welding and uh, then uh, explosive welding and diffusion uh, bonding diffusion bonding. So, in these cases although the, the, uh, the approaches are different for example, in case of the fusion welding processes normally uh, like in the fusion welding processes of faint surfaces uh, either brought to the uh, frank surfaces are brought to the fusion uh, are melted. So, that uh, the metallic continuity uh, is realized after the solidification in case of the fusion welding processes like here a spot welding also has been placed where in uh, like the, the, the overlapping plates are subjected to the application of the current flow through the copper electrodes from both the sides. So, there is a flow of current through the interface like say the current I flows and at the interface contact resistances R. So, depending upon the I square RT the time for which current flows heat is generated and that causes the melting at the interface especially. So, that uh, fusion plus uh, subsequent solidification leads to the development of the joint while in other cases in solid state welding processes the, the, the surface needs to be extremely clean. Uh, like this surface uh, must be very cleaned and, uh, the, and the pressure is applied to such an extent that uh, the, the two uh, surfaces come close to the atomic contact and so the firm metallic continuity exists between them and uh, then either th and this firm metallic continuity is realized through the surface layer deformation as well as diffusion. So, both these uh, places uh, both these uh, approaches work uh, significantly in case of the solid state joining processes. So, uh, the deformation uh, may be micro level deformation in case of the process like ultrasonic welding uh, and uh, uh, explosive welding, explosive welding. Uh, while the deformation is uh, of the macro scale means large scale deformation takes place in the processes like friction welding, friction steer welding and in case of the diffusion, uh, diffusion bonding the, the firm metal to metal surface contact. So, diffusion of atoms from one side to another is facilitated due to the concentration gradient of the alloying elements from one side to another and the, the metallic continuity is established at a high temperature. Mostly this is con conducted uh, in vacuum and under the pressure at a high temperature like 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 times of the melting point of the metals which are involved. Uh, so, but in these processes like in solid state joining processes there is no fusion, but the different approaches like the, uh, the macro or micro scale surface layer deformation or the diffusion is uh, used in order to achieve the metallic continuity uh, so that the joint can be made. Uh, now, some uh, basic terms we will be seeing related with the joints which are used in welding. Uh, then uh, there is it the welds which are used and then uh, we will also see the positions in which welding is carried out. So, these are the basic aspects related to the joints. Uh, the, there are different types of the joints which are used for the metallic continuity uh, whatever is the kind of uh, the joining process like brazing, shouldering or the welding 
or adhesive joining. So, the common types of the joints are like groove joint is one where groove like this is made. It can be square V or U any kind of the joint a groove can a, will be. So, the one is groove joint then there is a butt joint. Uh, so, the butt is one of the most uh, common joint butt joint then we have the lap joint where the plates to be joined are kept in overlapping positions. So, uh, lap joint then we have a corner joint where in the plates to be joined uh, uh, like lap joint may be made like this or at the interface or like this also. So, it may be made a single uh, fillet or double fillet or the uh, the filler metal at the interface like in brazing and shouldering. Uh, then in case of the corner joint, the joint is uh, made like this where in uh, the fillet is made at the corner. So, this is corner joint and then there is edge joint and T joint edge joint uh, goes in like this where the joint is made at the edge of the component to be joined. So, this is the edge and the, the weld will be made in this uh, location for edge joint and then T joint depending upon the orientation the plates are like this and another plate is brought at 90 degree on the top surface of the, the plate. So, here the fillet weld can be used like this for making the T joint. So, this is the kind of uh, these are the 4 or 5 types of the joints butt joint, lap joint, corner joint, edge joint and the T joint. So, the butt joint offers very good uh, tensile strength as well as fatigue resistance as compared to the lap joint and the T joint means other joint configurations because of the better uh, residual stress distribution and uh, reduced uh, possibility for the stress concentration. Then the, there are different types of the welds which are made. Uh, these uh, welds are like uh, groove weld where uh, the groove is prepared like this and it is filled in. So, the, this is like, like V groove likewise there can be square groove or there can be U groove like this between the members to be joined there can be J groove like this so, J configuration is made just one side likewise there can be single V, single U. Uh, single J or double J, double U or double V kind of the groove joints. Then there is fillet weld, fillet weld, fillet weld these are uh, very common, but these result in very high stress concentration. So, uh, the two of the weld leads to the higher, uh, uh, higher stress concentration and uh, which uh, becomes the cause of the uh, point of the stress concentration. So, the weld, weld is like this. So, here this is the toe of the weld which uh, where stress concentration will be high and this is the fillet weld which is uh, made. Uh, in case of the groove weld, uh, the, 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 the toe of the weld is this one. Here also we will see the stress concentration, but not as high as that uh, in case of the fillet welds. Then uh, uh, there is another uh, kind of uh, the arrangement uh, which is called like say in the top view if we see uh, the plate uh, looking like this then another plate to be joined is made like this. We can make one hole uh, on the top plate and through uh, so and it just it touches uh, the, the through hole is made in the top plate and the plate is placed on the bottom plate and then uh, one continuous weld is made on the inner surface of the upper plate so that the metallic connection between the top and bottom plate is achieved. So, if we see the same thing in the in the front view then what we will see like uh, this is uh, uh, here it will be going like this, this is the top plate and the hole was made like this. So, the weld will be leading to this way all around the periphery. So, the melting of the lower plate as well as the some portion of the top plate is also 
achieved all around the periphery. When this kind of arrangement is made, it is called a plug weld and when the shape of the weld is a square instead of the circular, uh, sorry shape of the weld is a rectangular, shape of the slot in the top plate is a rectangular uh, like this and then weld is made all along the uh, periphery of this uh, slot, then it is called uh, no, slot weld. So, plug weld for the circular hole and the slot weld for the rectangular hole and then uh, we have the uh, bead weld which is normally used for the surfacing or overlaying purpose like this is the surface of the component which has worn out or which uh, need to be surfaced for improved properties or to regain the dimensions then we deposit the bead over the surface in this way. and subsequently uh, so likewise the number of beads can be deposited uh, on the surface of the component and then we can machine it out in order to have the surface. So, the, the, the surface with the uh, weld bead deposited like this uh, will be able to help to regain the size and shape of the component as well as uh, it may also be used to improve the surface properties of the component. So, this uh, one is called surfacing process. Surfacing can be used for uh, like hard facing when uh, very hard material is uh, uh, deposited as a weld bead or it can be used for improving the corrosion resistance when then it is called cladding and when it is used just for uh, regaining the dimensions then it is called reclamation reclamation. So, the weld bead can be used in different ways in order to uh, have uh, uh, the regaining the size and shape uh, improving the surface properties or for the hard facing purpose. So, now here I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation first I talk, try to talk uh, about some of the important features related to the grinding uh, wheel like uh, the dressing, truing and balancing of the grinding wheel. and. Uh, Thereafter, I started the fundamentals of the metal joining processes, wherein uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the different ways by which the joints of the metallic materials can be made, and uh, what are the different types of the welds, different types of the joints, and uh, the different positions in which uh, weld can be made. Uh, that this I will be talking in the next uh, lecture. Thank you for your attention.